Hi, Henry. <laughs> Welcome to the PNHB um, awards dinner or after dinner awards ceremony, Henry. Um, you're you're here. We're projecting your image um, and your family and your your lovely wife. <laughs> You can't see the audience, but they can see you. We have about 250 healthcare advocates here. It's my pleasure and a great honor to be standing here in front of you all to present the Quinton Young Health Activist Award to Dr. Henry Kahn. Henry, we'll, we'll give you a chance to make some remarks afterwards, okay? You'll have a chance. <laughs> Henry Kahn is a retired internal medicine physician, an emeritus professor at Emory University School of Medicine, and an adjunct faculty at Morehouse School of Medicine, and Rollins School of Public Health. He's been involved in social justice advocacy efforts since his youth and was one of the founding members of PNHP in the late 1980s. Henry attended Harvard College from 1960 to 1964, where he joined the Radcliffe Harvard Socialist Club. He also became involved in anti-Vietnam War demonstrations and attended the March on Washington in August of 1963. Around that time, he decided to study medicine rather than pursue graduate studies in biochemistry because of the opportunities for community service that come with practicing medicine. The summer before starting medical school, Henry volunteered with the Medical Committee for Human Rights, supporting civil rights workers in Mississippi during the Freedom Summer of 1964. Hmm. He then attended Harvard Medical School from 1964 to 1968, after which he completed two years of internal medicine residency in Boston before spending a year as a pediatric resident in the South Bronx with the Lincoln Collective. Henry married his wife, Mickey Gilmore, during that year at Lincoln. And in 1972, Henry and Mickey moved to Atlanta, where Henry worked in the CDC's Epidemic Intelligence Service for two years. In 1973, he was Emory's first faculty member appointed in primary care. Henry played a major role in developing the Grady Hospital Neighborhood Clinics, where he served as a primary care physician from 1974 to 2001. After retiring from academia in 2001, Henry returned to the CDC as a full-time epidemiologist of chronic diseases until his retirement in 2018. Henry has more than 160 published peer-reviewed academic papers, and he continues to read the medical literature and publish scholarly articles on a regular basis. He's published many articles on universal healthcare, has given innumerable presentations on single payer and has written numerous op-eds and letters to the editor. 13 people signed on to the award nomination letter that I submitted to the PNHP board in May of this year. Several advocates shared anecdotes with a heartfelt entreaty to the board to recognize the innumerable contributions that Dr. Henry Kahn has made and continues to make to the movement for social justice and universal health care. He still blows up my email every day. On a personal level, Henry is highly intelligent, knowledgeable, and well-connected, but he's also warm, engaging, and kind. I can confidently say that he has been the spark that has kept the Georgia chapter going over the past two decades. That's my involvement in the past two decades. Recently, Henry and I conspired to propose the formation of a PNHB Georgia steering committee, which has turned out to be a resounding success. We have lively, talented, and energetic members with a broad range of personalities, interests, and skills. And we've age. already achieved some successes. The Atlanta City Council passed a resolution in support of Medicare for All on September 19th. And the Georgia State Democratic Convention adopted a similar resolution just a few weeks earlier. Henry 
Congratulations on receiving this well-deserved honor. I look forward to your continued involvement, leadership, and mentoring and friendship in the months and hopefully the years ahead. Oh my. Congratulations. <clears throat> <laughs> you can talk yeah well that that's wonderful and I, I i can't tell with whom i'm also now speaking is that uh tim no it's, it's mad it's <laughs> yeah it's yeah, speaking to the group I, I, they can hear you okay well that's wonderful i have to say that somewhere around 40 years ago <clears throat> i got my fbi file and it it, it was a lot smaller than that, um, at least um, it, at least when I got down to read the parts that hadn't been redacted, it was quite a bit less than the kind words that uh, Karen Hutchman just shared about me. I know she made much of it up, but that was also true of my FBI file. So uh, um, I can't, I won't go any further in comparing her skills with theirs. There was a time in 64 when I <clears throat> had narrowly survived a Ku Klux Klan attack in Jackson, Mississippi, the night before I was leaving this Freedom Summer to come back to start medical school. And the FBI came to my hotel room and they, small old motel, and they questioned me at length and assured me it's just some good old boys having fun. Don't worry about it. They're really not gonna kill you tonight, which is what they had said they would do. Um, and in the next six months, I learned that the FBI, despite my report to the FBI in August of 1964, the FBI continued looking for me throughout the state of Mississippi because they were embarrassed they had lost track of a radical, um, um, I can't remember the words they used, it wasn't kind, but there was, it was, I was a nefarious instrument. Uh, influence on the polity of, uh, of the state of the sovereign state of Mississippi, and they had to find me. They spent, I'm sure, hundreds of hours sending teletypes all across the state and never did find me because they had neglected to remember that I was about to get on the plane and start medical school in Boston, where I was speaking every week on the things that I learned from the Mississippi Freedom Summer. But this opportunity to celebrate with my friends with whom I cannot be, uh, sorry about that. And I can't, wish I could be in Boston with you, but I do appreciate it a lot. And thank you for thinking of me. I will cherish the shallot with or without the plaque. And <laughs> I wish you well in the rest of this PNHP meeting. It's so important. Thanks. <laughs>